In part zero of module one, we went over, we reviewed the mass, energy, and entropy equations. And what we'll do here is application of these equations to closed steady systems, specifically uh, cycles executing heat engines. Again, these are all reviews of chapter two. So let's begin with uh, how the equations are simplified for a closed steady system. So for instance, this is a screenshot from the animation of a generic system at closed steady state. These are the governing equations, the mass, energy, and entropy equation. As we discussed before, at steady state, the stunt goes to zero. Why? Because think about this system. This is a system here. In this case, it's a closed system. No mass goes in, no mass comes out. But it has nothing to do with steadiness. Steadiness means that if this part, if you take any, any local system in a large system, each of this local system will not change their state over time. If this point is if this yellow point is hot, it will always remain hot. If this is cold, it will always remain cold. If over here there is a high pressure, it will always remain at the same pressure. It doesn't mean these individual local states are the same state. Local states are each different. One is here yellow, one is here green, representing this local state, but they don't change with time. As a result, if you find the mass of the system by aggregating the mass of each local system, the total mass will not change with time. dm dt will be zero. Likewise, all these unsteady terms will be zero. If it's a closed system, these guys go out to zero. This, there is no mass going out. So the mass equation assumes a very simple form. Oh, sorry, mass equals constant because dm dt equals zero. The energy equation becomes q dot equals w dot external. And the entropy equation becomes zero equals q dot over tb plus s dot gen. Okay, so let's now apply these equations to a specific closed steady system. So suppose we have a light bulb, electrical lamp. So the red dashed boundary is the boundary around the bulb. And we have uh, electric work pouring in. And we'll call this W dot in. And as because the energy is coming into the bulb, to remain a steady state, energy must be going out. The only way energy can go out is through heat transfer. So at steady state, the energy equation, as you can see, simplifies to be to Q dot equals W dot external. What is Q dot? Excuse me. Q dot is going out. So Q dot out is a positive number. And we know Q dot in this case, which is algebraic, is negative because it is going out. So Q dot out is negative. I mean, Q dot is negative Q dot out. And what is W dot external? Again, W dot in being a positive quantity, because in itself tells you the direction, whereas W dot external, you have to put a sign to say which way the work is going. Win hip means work in is negative. Remember our sign convention. So W dot external will become negative W dot in. And this is something one should try to understand thoroughly that how the sign convention kicks in. This is the energy equation which has sign built in. And we are taking, we are now getting sign out of this by putting absolute values. So when we write, suppose the equation is Q dot out equals W dot in, physically it's much more appealing because it tells you whatever energy is going in as work is coming out. And there is no sign involved here. It's all physics. So this is the conclusion from the energy equation. Similarly, we could uh, do an analysis on the 
on, of, of the entropy equation, you can go back to the animation, click on this link, and see how entropy equation is handled for this ball. I'll leave it for you. Meanwhile, uh, let's get to the main reason why we are reviewing chapter 2, because this is going to feed into a number of chapters later on. We want to discuss heat engine as a special case of a closed steady system. Again, this is from a specific animation in chapter 2. This boundary is defining the system here, a closed system. Think of it like a black body. Don't go into the details of how an engine works, etc. Let's forget about all that. It's a closed system which executes a cycle. What does it mean? It's a steady closed system which takes heat from a hot reservoir at a rate Q dot H and produces network while rejecting some heat to a cold reservoir, if you recall. So this is the definition of a heat engine. A heat, heat, it converts, a heat engine converts heat to work. The desired quantity is the network and the required input is the Q dot H. Their ratio is called the thermal efficiency, W dot net by Q dot H. Sometimes we'll call it Q dot in or Q dot H. We'll interchange that. Similarly, Q dot C, we might call it Q dot out, but the meaning remains the same. All of these guys are positive number, absolute number. So when you substitute them in the energy equation, we have to take care of the sign convention. So let's take a look at the energy equation for this system. The system is here. Q dot in this case become Q dot. There are two places where heat transfer occurs. Q dot H is where heat goes in and Q dot C is what heat goes out. So it's Q dot H minus Q dot C. And W dot net is in the positive sense, right? Wind hip work is coming out, so it's positive. So W dot net is substituted for W dot external and giving us a formula for W dot net to be Q dot H minus Q dot C. You can see that's kind of Q dot net. So we'll see this equation a lot of time in a cycle. This is always true. The net work, the, the, then the net heat that goes into a cycle is the network that comes out of it. So in the efficiency definition, we can substitute W dot net as Q dot H minus Q dot C leading to this formula. So this will be a very common formula we'll use all the time. Q dot, Q dot out by Q dot in or Q dot C by Q dot H. And this formula for thermal efficiency will be valid whether the engine is uh, heat engine is uh, perfect, ideal, or, or an actual engine. If we go to the analyze this cycle for entropy, okay, before you do the entropy, remember that, always remember that energy is conserved just like mass. So to understand the energy flow, it always pays to think almost it like a flow, mass flow rate. So for instance, heat entering here is part of it is coming out as work and part of it is coming out as heat. So that's why we have a balance. That's why we can write just like in a mass flow, if things went in, a mass flow went in and got split into two stream, we would have written without thinking that Q dot H must be one of the stream in which is coming out as work, another stream with Q dot C. And so this is almost an intuitive answer for energy, which comes out of the energy equation. Again, it's steady state, that's why dE dt equals zero, and rest of it follows from this simple energy, simple form of the energy equation. Now let's go to the entropy equation. ds dt means the rate at which entropy changes in the system depends on two things. One is how entropy enters through heat. We know there is no mass transfer because it's closed system. And because entropy can be generated somewhere in the system's universe. System's universe means the system which includes the system and the immediate surroundings where friction is possible. So if, suppose it's an ideal engine, if there is absolutely no friction, then S dot gen will go to zero, and the equation simplifies to 
Notice how q dot over tb is separated into two terms because tb and q dot are different in these two boundaries. Remember, q dot over tb happens to the boundary, so you go around the boundary looking for any heat transfer, and we see q dot h is going in here, so therefore q dot h will not only carry energy, it will also carry entropy at the rate q dot, o, q dot h over th. So entropy is flowing in, entropy is flowing out with heat, and we know entropy could also be generated, but in an ideal case, if there is no thermodynamic friction, this is zero. So what it means is that in an ideal situation, heat going in, e uh, entropy going in equals entropy coming out. Notice, this is a heat engine, so work is produced. W dot net is coming out, but we know that net work doesn't carry any entropy, doesn't transfer any entropy, because work is an organized form of energy as it is transferred. When the energy is transferred in a very organized manner, we call it work. So you can see the entropy equation gives us the big bold conclusion that the, the ratio of heat transfers equals the ratio of temperature in Kelvin. So if you go back to our formula for thermal efficiency, we can substitute this relation here and get a very simple formula for the thermal efficiency of a reversible perfect engine, which is called the Carnot engine, after its discover. And it is 1 minus Tc over Th. Of course, this formula, 1 minus Q dot by Q dot C by Q dot H, is always valid for any engine. For a Carnot engine, it reduces to this simple formula. So we'll analyze so many different kind of engines, different kind of cycles, like Brayton cycle, auto cycle, diesel cycle, Rankine cycle. In any of these cycles, this will be our guiding line. You will see how, how far this formula helps us out. If we know the Tc and Th, the maximum, say, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, immediately the Carnot efficiency will give us a limit to how high the thermal efficiency can be for a particular engine. We'll come back to this formula over and over again. Now let's quickly go over a simple problem uh, from Chapter 2. Uh, this is taken from the problems module. So let's see if you can quickly solve this problem. Okay, this is quite quite a simple problem. So the thermal efficiency is given to us for a gas turbine. We don't care what kind of heat engine it is. And the power output is given to us. So therefore, we know that the thermal efficiency, which by definition is net work net power by q dot in is 0 0.21 which is equals 8 megawatt by q dot in so therefore q dot in must be 8 divided by 0 0.21 it's in megawatt which is uh, 38 point zero nine well suppose the fuel consumption rate is m dot f in kg per second then if every second we are burning m dot f amount of fuel and one kg of fuel generate or releases 50 million joules of heat which is known as the heating value, that must be the total amount of heat that is released. Right? So therefore, M dot F is given by 38.09 by 50, so many kg per second, and that translates to you know, multiplied by 60 in every second, uh, every minute it will be 45.72 kg per minute. 
So we found the mass flow rate of fuel, the rate at which fuel is burned. And finally, determine the maximum thermal efficiency possible. And that's the beauty of the Carnot efficiency because we know the best, the Carnot cycle is, will have the most possible efficiency when using the maximum temperature and minimum temperature of the cycle, which are given here, 17 and 300. So the thermal efficiency of the Carnot cycle is 1 minus Tc over Th, 1 minus 300 by 1700. So that gives us an efficiency of 82.35%. Okay, this is a very simple problem, but even then, we can verify the results using a test calc. Let's go hunt for a test suitable test calc. Uh, system analysis will go for closed system and steady system. Steady cycles are right here. And launch test calc will start the test calc. Uh, there are heat engine, heat engine is already selected here. And what is known is the efficiency of the cycle is given, which is 21%. And the net work produced in the cycle, w.net is eight, eight megawatt. Right here, obviously it produces q.h and q.c, and that's the same number we got, it's in kilowatt. We can go to megawatt, that's the answer. And we can divide this by in the heating value to obtain the mass flow rate of fuel, which can, we can do that in the I.O. panel if we want, which serves as a calculator. To find uh, the, thermo, the Carnot efficiency, uh, we know we, Carnot efficiency is a function of the cold temperature and the hot temperature. The cold temperature is 300 Kelvin, so let's make sure it's correctly entered, 300 Kelvin. And what is the hottest temperature? The heat addition temperature TH is here, which is in this problem is 1700 Kelvin. And you hit enter, and that produces the Carnot efficiency. A very simple problem. We really don't uh, have to verify uh, because it's so simple calculations, but it's good to know that there is a tool with which you can verify this problem. When the problems get more complicated, you will see the value of verifying all manual calculations.